Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. So much of Jesus' gospel is about helping us to see what we think we need and know in a new light. It's about helping us to see what we think we need and know in a new light, a different perspective. And so often that we find that what we think we know is wrong. What we think we need is mistaken. King Jesus, crown him with many crowns. Majesty, worship his majesty. Amen? But what kind of a king What kind of a crown? What kind of majesty? We learn much from seeing Jesus arrive in Jerusalem, the seat of power, the place of prestige and history, the city of King David himself, on a borrowed donkey. What kind of king, what kind of a crown, what kind of majesty? Would you go into the next village and there you'll find the colt of a donkey tied up. If anyone asks you why you're taking it, say, my master needs it. The babe who was laid in a borrowed manger, approaches the end of his life riding a borrowed donkey. What kind of a king? What kind of a crown? What kind of majesty? We maybe need to rethink. And yet the crowd cries out, blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. I mean, it looks as if it should be a triumphal entry. It looks like the sort of entrance that a a warlike warrior king would make, riding into a city with his followers and come to claim his crown. It looks right until you look closely and see that this is not some warrior king in battle-stained armor, riding on a charger with a name, one of those swords by his side with a name. It's not that kind of a king. But a preacher rabbi, seated on a donkey's colt. Somehow we need to see this new kingship in the humility of a borrowed donkey, in a crown cruelly constructed from thorns, in the majesty of a cross of wood, For the events of this day are not separated from the events of the days to come. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. What sort of a king? What sort of a crown? What sort of majesty? The crowd cry out, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. For good is at work, for God is at work. But it all looks far from peaceful and far 
from glorious. As I began to reflect on this passage, a passage I must have preached on dozens of times. Words from one of Kendrick's great songs of the 80s echoed through my mind. We'll sing it together in a few moments, but first, may I read it to you. Meekness and majesty, manhood and deity, in perfect harmony, the man who is God, Lord of eternity, dwells in humanity, kneels in humility and washes our feet. Father's pure radiance, perfect in innocence, yet learns obedience to death on a cross, suffering to give us life, conquering through sacrifice. And as they crucify, praise Father, forgive. Wisdom unsearchable, God the invisible, love indestructible, in frailty appears. Lord of infinity, stooping so tenderly, lifts our humanity to the heights of his throne. Oh, what a mystery, meekness and majesty. Bow down and worship, for this is your God. What kind of a king, what kind of a crown, what kind of majesty? This king riding on a borrowed donkey, this teacher, this lord, this saviour. The imagery of Palm Sunday is so much more powerful than the sound of the praise and the, the excitement and the celebration. I've often wondered whether some of those who celebrated so enthusiastically on the Sunday sang and chanted a different sound on the Friday. But for now, let's hear again those people chanting, shouting, praising, singing. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Let's hear them shouting and notice that respectable religious people do not like this sort of enthusiasm and excitement. It's not controllable and controlled. And so religious authorities complain. Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And Jesus answered, I tell you, if these were silent, these stones would shout out. Peace in heaven, glory in the highest, good is at work, God is at work. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This King, this 
meek, humble, servant king. And what's our challenge? What's our take from this? As we have our vision revised, as we see this king in new light, what will we do? What will we cry out? Will we learn the value of the least? Will we learn the value of the vulnerable? Will we learn the value of those on the edges? Will we learn the value of individuals who, well, like my friend, who can't sit still this morning, but who is loved by God, whose God is with him in the midst of his turmoil, who's with us in the midst of our turmoil too. Will we cry out that this is what kingship looks like? loving the least? Will we cry out that this is what majesty looks like, caring for the vulnerable? Will we cry out that this is what a crown looks like? We are crowned in service of him and of others. This Palm Sunday is not just a getting ready for the main event later this week. I've always found it slightly strange that we pass out palm crosses, but please, there's a whole basket of them at the front. Do help yourselves. I, I love the idea of the palm cross, but the, the cross should be Friday, surely. Surely today it's, it's, it's about praising this king and and yet the palm cross reminds us of the shadow of this day on what will come. But it's not simply a rehearsal for the main event. It is a day that teaches us to look and to look differently. To look and to see with new eyes. Will we look and see kingship, majesty, as Jesus lays down his life for us this week? And will we see his humility and majesty, his meekness and majesty in those around us as we seek to live as his disciples this week? What kind of a king, what kind of a crown, what kind of majesty? The Jesus kind. Amen. Let's take a few moments to be quiet. But then we will respond to these words by singing Kendrick's great hymn.